Hello, my name is Garx82, and welcome back to our Greg Tech New Horizons Season 2. I have just a couple things running here because I am getting the superconducting coils crafted up here, and uh, they are quite complicated. Uh, with the smelting time, lots and lots of HSS needs to be smelted, and then obviously the superconductor wires take a little while. Our assembly uh, multi block, but uh, yeah, it is just chugging away. Um, I was um, kind of curious how much I could craft up at once uh, without running out of EU and uh, I did four at once and this dropped from about I think it was about almost 11 billion to 3 billion so that's about as much as we can handle right now I would like to upgrade our um, the amount of EU per tick we are crafting I don't necessarily want to get into like a brand new type of power gen at this point um i really just want to start working towards the fusion reactor and basically once this is off we'll just kind of let this fill up a little bit more and then we'll start crafting more um at this point uh, i have one more here and uh yeah you can see how many <laughs> thirty-two thousand six hundred nine processes that's hilarious um, and we have a few in here. So I did two at a time and then I did four. So we're up to six, but we ha need like 33. So that is going to take quite a while. Um, I have gone ahead and um, crafted up a uh, new reactor and... Uh, I was just wanted to produce more hot coolant. Um, I have this all filled up. The same thing we are doing here. Um, and I just don't have it turned on yet because I don't have it hooked up. Because I was thinking... Oh, I do actually have it. I totally... I forgot I, I hooked it up. I don't think I have enough... I don't have enough heat exchangers yet. Is what uh, is keeping me from turning it on. Uh, so I'm thinking either we do a third one. I don't know why. It would go there, probably. Uh, either a third large heat exchanger, or I do something different and upgrade the heat exchangers. Now there are multiple types of heat exchangers. Now I think there is three of them now. Um, I don't know which one is better. I have no idea how big that is. Five by nine by five. That one doesn't say how big it is. Uh, I was thinking the extreme ex heat exchanger though, because this also does plasma. And uh, I was thinking if we do this <clears throat> and the recipes don't, it doesn't look that difficult. As we can see, um, we do have the Mara steel stuff. Also, check this really quick. Oh, that's that's really small. <laughs> All right, so that Mara doesn't do good turbines. The other ones did the Mar C. Can't remember. Like, these are decent-ish, but I still think the Trinium ones we did are way better with the, the efficiency. Um, but uh, the only issue with that is if I start messing with all this stuff, I don't want to... I don't want to break my power gen, because then we won't be able to... I guess I could replace it. I guess what I could do is maybe build it over here. 
I don't know how big it is, so let me do that. The other cool thing about the extreme heat exchanger, there is... There are recipes for it in here. And you actually get another thing I've never seen before. Um, super critical steam. Obviously, we're not making plas plasma yet. We will, though, eventually. Um, we are going to be using the hot cold. Now, I think this is the max. The other issue is, is this for superheated or is that for super critical or is that for everything like i have to be up at 8000 because i am not producing enough uh for that which i kind of have a feeling just a few uranium reactors is not going to be producing enough a uh, hot coolant for that these produce about uh 13 1350 each So I may, I kind of want to at least test it because I don't know if if that 8,000, if that's required. Because it does say max fluid hot input is 16,000. I'm assuming it does need 8,000, which I would need a whole lot of reactors for that. <clears throat> We are back and uh, crafted up the heat exchanger, and I decided I wanted to test this out before I really started crafting up all this stuff, because I wasn't entirely sure what the... if this threshold was for superheat steam or is it for supercritical steam. I kind of had a feeling it was for supercritical steam, uh, because there is no, like regular steam hatch kind of thing like if there was a one regular steam and then superheated and then super critical i'd be like yeah maybe but i just wanted to make sure so i did test it in creative mode in uh the overworld and uh it does in fact create superheated steam without being at that 8000 threshold it doesn't produce the super critical steam so <clears throat> this threshold is is for that which is fine, because I wasn't really planning on doing that. If I wanted to do that with my setup right now, I would have to craft up three more whole nuclear reactors. And I don't think we... We're not using power, like... I mean, we're using quite a bit of power, but... Uh, I don't think we need to get into that. Uh, but uh, I was starting to look at the recipe here, and... Um, a decently sized multi-block i am going to replace these with it um basically the the controller is going to go where this maintenance hatch is and then go that way um so the hot coolant will come in and it actually goes right in the front that's where the hot goes in and then the other end the hot comes out now unfortunately the the tooltip is totally missing stuff uh, for example, all these robust tungsten steel pipe casings, you need 60 of those. And there's also another block right in there. You can kind of see it. Um, and I couldn't tell what the heck that was. There was no documentation of it anywhere. Um, but thankfully, <clears throat> um, when I was doing testing, you can... Um, if you're in creative mode, it'll build the whole block for it. So I went and checked to see what block that was in the one uh, that I was testing with. And it is this pressure resistant wall. Um, and that is requires another ink alloy and uh, niobium titanium thing. So I made a recipe for that. But you do need quite a few of those. Uh, each slice or whatever is like 12. There's one, two, three, four. So you need 48 of those. Um, so not the cheapest of multi-blocks. 
Uh, I think I do have everything for it. I mean, now that I'm looking at the recipe, it's actually not really not that bad. Let's just get that going. Um, but before I do that, and I have wanted to do this for a little while, um, I think I'm actually going to upgrade my vacuum freezer um, because that is the bottleneck. Uh, for example, these 60 pipe casings, um, I think it was about, I want to say a thousand tungsten steel about. Um, what are these called? Pipe casing. Yeah, so not a thousand. Holy cow. <laughs> 60. Yeah, so it needed a thousand tungsten steel. So basically, this was completely done smelting, and this I think had about 700 left to freeze. So I want to upgrade this. Now, there's two options here um, there is the mega freezer, which I really don't like these megas. There's like three of them, Mega Blast. Oh, there's four now. Mega Chemical Reactor even. I mean, we might get to a point where we have to use these. I really hope. I really don't want to because I don't like them. 15 by 20 by 15. I mean, that is just an absolute massive thing. I mean, it just looks so silly. It's just a big giant blue box. This is 15 by 15 by 15. 900 Frost Brews. I just don't like these. Multi-blocks at all. At least the mega chemical reactor is only five by five by nine, but uh, I want to avoid doing that. So I thought I would try a different route, and I know this is totally not the best way. Would do would be the mega freezer. I hundred percent know that is the most efficient way to do it. You just need a whole bunch of vacuum freezers and a whole bunch of the frost proof machine casings but other than that that's pretty much all that goes into it but you know a decent amount 7000 aluminum that goes into it the other way and i thought this might just be kind of fun to set it up i don't think it's going to last me you know to the end game but there is a cryogenic freezer um which is kind of similar to the vulcanus uh but the freezing part of it so this one requires cryothium. So I would have to come up with cryothium in the similar kind of way I have come up, you know, with pyrothium. I would have to come up with a thing for cryothium, and I'm going to do that. And this is, like I said, I know this is probably not the best way to do it, but it was more just I kind of wanted to do something a little bit different than uh, just a big, massive freezer multi-block that I have nowhere to put. I have no idea where I would even put that. <clears throat> um, so yeah, I'm going to do the exact same thing I did over here. Mixer and then a fluid extractor into the multi-block. Um, from what I'm looking at, it does require one liter per tick. Um, I don't know if that increases the more you upgrade it. Or is that like just a one liter per tick and like the faster you can get it, the more you can do for that same one liter? I'm not quite sure. Um, this is mostly just for fun. Um, but I figured I would do this before I smelt up all the crazy amounts of tungsten steel that we're going to need for all the, the outside of it. The the frame or what? Not the frame, but the I can't remember what the machine casings. There we go. Um, so I'm going to start doing this. Now, there are a few ways to do this. Unfortunately, I was thinking about going the multi-block with the spawner. This is a mob spawner, basically, but a multi-block version of it. Unfortunately, it looks like Blizz rods. You can't get those from that thing. Because um, if you look at <coughs> Blaze rods... It actually sh shows up on this mob drops with the the thing, so you can do this. Uses two thousand year per tick every two, and it drops blaze rods uh, for you. But there is no. You can even see all the different all the different mobs you can put in there that would give that. But there is none for the blizz. 
So I think you can only get them from freezing blaze rods. So I figured I would go that route and then we will pulverize them down for Ryothium, uh, I think. So let me start getting that set up and then we'll come back when I kind of have this sorted out. I need a mixer and a... Uh, Oh, I don't need that one. No, I did the wrong one. No, I canceled the wrong one. <laughs> I canceled the processing thing. Not processing. What are they called? Pressure. Yeah, whoops. All right, well, I'll start that again and uh, we'll be back. All right, we are back. I've got this set up. I'm um, on here. Unfortunately, I had to put some stone bricks in there to stop it pulling in <clears throat> the items it wasn't supposed to with the conveyor belts. Um, but it sort of works. The only problem is if it goes through all of a stack and then it doesn't keep filling it up for some reason, it'll pull in the wrong thing. But uh, that pretty much... <clears throat> Pretty much worked okay. Now, I don't know how fast this is going to go through it, but uh, we'll see. <clears throat> um, I have everything set up for this. Um, the couple of the items are a bit more complicated than I realized. Uh, the Lafium requires the LUV, and it's actually quite slow and an argon gas and <clears throat> another one is the hgg which that part of it is not a problem in there somewhere but uh, the problem starts uh when you need to turn it into like plates you do need an luv and these are not set up for that unfortunately i think our bending is actually even yeah it's only on LUV or did I do IV I might have done that's right I have a IV energy hatch but it's actually only fed by EV um, so I can't do a couple of these recipes another one is the Lafium. the rods need a Big extruder. So what I've actually done is upgraded the blast smelter and our fluid solidifier over here uh, to LUV. And then I'm just solidifying the rods that we need for this because this is going to need an extruder and I didn't feel like messing with that. Uh, so I just did as many as we're going to need and made them. Uh, directly into rods and I also crafted up a elite bending machine. I know it seems kind of silly that I would craft up one elite bending machine just for one item but uh, I didn't feel like messing with all this stuff because I would need to <clears throat> do transformers and run all different types of cables and stuff just for the one thing and I didn't feel like doing that. So I just crafted up the bending machine, and it's relatively easy to craft up, actually. Uh, just a couple LEV components, which aren't bad. So that is kind of where I'm at there. We got a Creothium. I'm just crafting up the rest of this here. And I don't know... Well, I know there's, there's going to be a recipe for it. Um, I have... Crafted up the cryothium cooling hatch, which is similar to the other one. Uh, I think we need 17 of these. And uh, we should be good. That is a lot of 10. Maybe I shouldn't do 10. I do have quite a bit, but... You can also do it with aluminum. 
Ah, I'm not going to worry about it. We're not crafting up a lot of these, so... We'll get that going. The other weird one... The other weird recipe was this HGG stuff. It requires a mercury cell. Uh, I have no way to do that. I just did a stack and threw them in the A system and I threw an output bus for the empty cells right here. I'll just manually do it. Uh, it doesn't... I'm not super worried about it. Uh, but I have so many like circuits in here now. I need added it a 5 and an 8, I think. Hopefully... Hopefully this will work okay. I'm not sure. But alright. So I'll continue doing that. And I think I'll basically just replace. I think this is. Yeah, it's a 3x3x3. Three by three by three, so I'll basically just replace these with the cryo thing. And we'll just leave it like that. Oh, I also needed. Uh, this helium stuff needed liquid helium so that is what this is I just manually threw some helium in there but I think we are ooh we have problems in our reactor doesn't happen very often but it does happen sometimes Let's try to get this thing working here. I'm assuming these will all switch over. Actually, I don't know if a stocking input bus is actually going to work. Now that I'm thinking about it, we'll see. I've had issues with that and the GT++ machines before. All right. Pretty sure... Input bus, output bus, energy hatch, main inside, yeah. Ooh, it needs a muffler hatch. I do not have a muffler hatch on me. Oh, actually, I do. No, I do not. All right, we're good. I don't need a... I was like, do I need a vacuum? Vacuum freezer for that? We do not. Probably put it on the back right there. Oh shoot, I made an extra one. Oh well. We'll see if... Yeah, you can see some of them have changed. That work yes I think it did all right cool so the the stocking input bus did work I can't remember what it didn't work on something and I don't remember oh it might have been the I think it was the neutron activator the stocking thing didn't work on but okay there is this thing hopefully This won't be too crazy with the cryothium, but I could be wrong. At... I think we're good. Yep, good on channels. Could even switch this up a bus. It doesn't really matter, though. Alright, and then if I hit this, it should start filling this up. Should start filling that up. Should start filling that up. There we go. Alright, I will have to keep an eye on this. Just to make sure. 
It is working okay, but I think that is it. Should we... We see if it works okay. Um, so HSS was kind of like what I was using a ton of. Yeah, this is for the cryotheum. That. And then C. I mean, everything should just end up over here. Like, yeah. Right. Seems to be working. No problem. The question is, how much of this is it? Actually, I should have just looked at the, the hatch. I can see. Dang it. I should have just looked at the... I don't know why I was thinking I had to go over there for it. Alright. <clears throat> it is mixing the stuff. It's going to take a second. But hopefully this will... I mean, obviously it's going to be faster. I don't know if it's going to be that efficient with the cryotheum. We'll see. I don't have the best way to get the blizz rods yet. If we had... If we had um, bees, it would probably be easier. We're going to go through these like really quick is the issue. I'm hoping that... Needs it doing at once. Yeah, it's doing four at once. Yeah, that's a decent amount. I mean, we're still going up, so I don't know. I think we're good, actually. I think we'll be good. I should have the farm running as well. For pyrothium and the. Like, we're getting the blaze dust, but I need the blaze rods for the cryothium. I don't know, we'll see. If I like it or not. I'm worried I'm gonna, like, run out of cryothium, and then I won't be able to, like, make any more or something. Because I use the vacuum freezer. I mean, I guess I could always just set up a <clears throat> reset up the old vacuum freezer just to do blizz rods. I wish you could get it from a mob farm, but it does seem like that is not a thing. If we had bees, we could. We could easily get the blizz stuff. But, uh, yeah, that's <laughs> that's a, a whole endeavor in itself. Okay, we have gone ahead and got the freezer up and running. That's going to let us get all the items that we need for the extreme heat exchanger, all the casings, and the pressure-resistant walls and stuff. So, I will... Get that up and craft it up for the next episode. And then I think we're actually going to also upgrade our tank. Now, there's really no reason to do this other than just because I want to. So, uh, yeah, we'll break this down, rebuild it, and we will swap out these heat exchangers for the bigger one and that'll just let us expand our steam production and our power gen as needed and uh yeah because we are definitely pushing our power grid as we can see uh, i have the farm on so we're actually just about even if i turn the farm off then uh We'll start gaining more. I think I'm also going to craft up some more things for the 
the battery buffer. So we'll add another layer. But uh, anyway, that's going to be for today. So thanks for watching. Have a good one.